I will show you how to deploy and mint an NFT collection in five minutes. You won't need any knowledge about Web3 or blockchain. You just need to have some basic knowledge of web development. And we will use the NFT SDK of Infra, one of the best API for building Web3 application. If you are new here, I'm Julian and at In The Blocks, I help you to become a Web3 expert so that you can make more money, work remotely and work on projects that you love. Okay, so let's start the coding. So first, you need to install Node.js on your computer. This will work on macOS, Linux or Windows. Then you will need to create a free account on Infra. So Infra is one of the best API for Web3 development. They have a bunch of very useful endpoints, especially for NFT development. And to use these endpoints even more easily, they also have a SDK that's a JavaScript library and this is what we are going to use. So for this tutorial, I've prepared some code and so you will find this in this GitHub repo. And so in your terminal, start by creating a project folder and you can copy paste these different files. So msample, deploy, min.js, package.json, copy paste all these files and package log.json, you can ignore this. And I'm going to walk you through this code. And the first step will be to rename your file env sample into .env. And so this is where you are going to define all the API keys that we are going to use. And to get these API keys, we are going to create a new project in Infra. So I told you before to create a free account on that website. So you log in, then you create a project. So here you select Web3 API, and that's for our connection to the blockchain. So here you give a name to your project. And after you are going to copy your public key. And so in your .env file, you're going to paste it here. Then for the secret, you will need to go to this menu in Infra. Then you paste it here in the env file. Then for the wallet public address, you will need to create an address. So you can use this website for that. You click on generate address and it's going to generate an address and the private key. So you copy paste the address in your M file as well as the private key. And you have to make sure to keep this file secret. Otherwise, anybody can steal your funds. But when we are doing development, usually we use a throwaway account, so it doesn't matter. And we also need API keys for IPFS because we are going to use IPFS to store the metadata of our NFT. And for that, we're gonna need to create another project in Infra. So you go back to Infra, you create a new project and you copy paste the project ID. And finally, you copy paste the project secret. And that's it. And now we're good for the end file. Then let's check out package.json. So here we have two dependencies, the SDK of Infra. This will allow us to interact with the blockchain and with IPFS very easily. And then we have .env, that's a small dependency that allow you to read secret from your .env file. So after that, in your terminal, you need to install this dependency by running npm install. So now let's go to deploy.js and I'm going to walk you through the code. All right, so here in our deploy.js file, first we import the config object from .m, that's to read our secret. And then we import a couple of stuff from the infra SDK. So here at this line, we're going to load the secret from our .m file. So here, this is a utility function. I will go over this later. And here we are building this auth object. So this is to instantiate the infra SDK. So here we read the different secret from process.env. And here for the chain ID, we have to choose the blockchain where we want to deploy our NFT. And since we're doing a tutorial, we are going to use a public testnet called Sepolia. So this is a blockchain that is used for development. And this is based on the Ethereum technology. So in the development process, you want to first deploy there, make sure that everything works. And after you can deploy to Ethereum mainnet or some layer two like Polygon or Arbitrum. And you also give the API details for IPFS. That's a decentralized storage network. And this allows us to store the metadata, including the images for our NFTs. And the reason why we use IPFS instead of the blockchain is because it's very expensive to store a lot of data on the blockchain. So instead we use this IPFS network. All right, and so after here, we are going to instantiate our SDK. So after with this object, we can communicate both with the blockchain and with IPFS. And here we define an async function that we're gonna execute after. 
And so first here, we are going to store an image on IPFS and this image represents our NFT collection. So here I just picked an image randomly, but of course for your project, this is gonna be different. And the next step is to create a metadata object. And so here we use the metadata object from the Infra SDK. And here you can notice it says OpenSea collection level standard. So NFT are represented by ERC721 token. And in the ERC721 standard, there is a part on metadata, but that's not at the collection level. That's at the token level. So OpenSea, which is the largest NFT marketplace, added its own standard by defining some metadata applicable to the whole collection. And so this is what we define here, name, description, image. So here we use our utility function IPFS to URL, and that's because the URL that we get from the Infra SDK is an IPFS URL, and web browsers aren't able to read this kind of URL. So we need to turn it into a standard URL with HTTPS. And so this is what we do in our utility function here. So basically we are going to extract the IPFS hash and we're going to prepend this. And in the end, this will be readable by browsers. All right, so let's go back to where we were. And so here we're gonna console log our collection metadata and we are going to store the metadata on IPFS. And so this collection data, it's gonna be a JSON object that will be stored on IPFS. And after we are going to deploy our NFT. So here we use the SDK object, we use the deploy function. And here we're gonna specify a template for our NFT. So the Infra SDK has a couple of templates and the most used one is ERC721 Mintable. And we're gonna give a couple of parameters to the constructor of our smart contract, name, symbol, and contract URI that is going to point to the metadata on IPFS. And finally, we are going to print the contract address here. And so now in order to run this script, first, we need to get some testnet ether for our address. So for that, we need to use Fawcett. So Fawcett is a tool that provides you some testnet ether for free. So we can use the Fawcett of Alchemy. This requires you to create a free account on Alchemy. And after you can use this tool by copy pasting your address there, and you can verify that you have some testnet ether by using ether scans. So ether scan is a blockchain explorer, and this allow you to read the data of the blockchain, including the simple yeah, testnet. And so here we can see that we have received some testnet ether. And so with this, we'll be able to deploy our NFT. So we open the terminal and we are going to run our script node deploy.js. So you need to wait a bit until the transaction is mined on the Cipolia testnet. All right, and so here we see some output in the terminal. So here we can see the collection data, including the image of the collection. And here, uh, if you copy paste this, you will be able to read it in your browser. And that's the proof that our image was stored on IPFS. And we can also see the contract address here. And if you go to Sepolia Etherscan, you can pass this address and that's the proof that the NFT was deployed. All right, so congrats, you've successfully deployed your NFT and next we are going to mint it. So for that, we are going to mint.js and I'm going to walk you through the code. So the beginning is similar to the previous file, so we import the config, we read our secret, we import the different object of the SDK, and we need to put the address of our NFT contract here. So I copy pasted it from the console before. And here we also have a utility function to transform the IPFS URL. So authentication object, so authentication object and instantiation of the SDKs like before, wrap everything in an init function. After we are going to store the image of the token in IPFS. So, so this time this is not the image of the whole collection, but this is the image of a specific token. And so for example, our NFT collection is a collection of swords that can be used in the blockchain game. So I found a really cool sword and we're gonna use this for minting our first token. And after we are going to define the metadata of the token. So here again with the metadata object. And here we use a different function than before because this time it's the metadata of the token and not the whole collection. So name, description, image. And we also have to transform the URL into a normal URL with HTTPS. 
and here attributes we need it because otherwise this function is going to throw an error and after we're going to store this metadata in IPFS with the infer SDK and after we are going to create a pointer to our smart contract so it's a little bit similar to how you would do it with the ethers or web3.js so we need to define a template and the address of the smart contract and after by using this pointer we're going to call the mint function and so here it's going to be sent to this address and we also pass the URL to the metadata of this token. So we wait for this transaction to be mined. And then after we print the detail. So in our console, this time we're going to execute mint.js. Right. And so our NFT was minted. What I show you here is just a small part of what you can do with the NFT API of Infura. And so I wanted to give you a brief overview of all the NFT endpoints. This endpoint save you a lot of time because in a lot of cases, what they do is listen to events and store events in a database and expose this to you through an API. And if you had to do it yourself, that would be quite complex and also that would be quite costly to operate such an infrastructure. So Infra does all of this for you and it allows you to save a lot of time. So let's see these endpoints. So first we have a couple of endpoints about NFT transfers. For example, you can get all the NFT transfer in a certain range of block. You can get all the NFT transfer for a specific block. You can get all the NFT transfer for a specific wallet address. So that's very useful if you're building a wallet. Then you can get all the transfer for a specific token in an NFT. Then you can see all the transfer for a whole NFT collection. Then you have a couple of endpoints for metadata. So you can search for NFTs for a specific string. You can list all the NFTs that are owned by a specific address and you can get the metadata for a specific token in an NFT collection. After that, there are a couple of endpoints for NFT collection. You can get the metadata of the whole collection. You can get all the token with the metadata for a whole NFT collection. And you can get a list of all the NFT collection that are owned by a specific address. So then you have a couple of endpoints about ownership. You can get a list of all the owners for a specific NFT collection. And you can also restrict this list for a specific token of the NFT collection. And that's useful if the supply for a token is more than one. And finally, there is an endpoint about market data. So this endpoint gives you the lowest price for a specific NFT. So in the back end, it's going to query the biggest NFT marketplace like OpenSea, etc., and return the lowest price. And for all these endpoints, you can access them very easily by using the SDK. So then let's mention the different contract templates that you can have with this NFT SDK. So there are three templates. So you have ERC721 Mintable, that's the one we use. Then User Mintable, so this can be minted by user directly. And finally, we have ERC1155 Mintable. So you have a different option if you want to use this NFT SDK. It's quite flexible and all of this smart contract were built by using open zippling and all of them were thoroughly tested and there are six more contracts that are coming out soon you can use the nft sdk of infra across eight blockchains so it's very powerful so congratulations now you know how to deploy and mint an nft collection and we did this in just five minutes without any specific knowledge about web3 and this was possible thanks to the nft sdk of infra Infura is an amazing tool for Web3 developers, so I highly encourage you to explore the other NFT endpoints of Infura and build applications on top of the API. Alright, that's it for this video. Bye!